Jo, mysleli. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. We are all on this the thirty. Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and Friends of Baylor. A lot of energy there. <laughs> I'm excited about today because we're going to talk about my favorite topic, the zoo. So I have a long history of going to zoos. All right, when I was uh, a camp counselor in the inner city of Detroit, we used to go to the zoo every Friday. Detroit had a pretty good zoo. And uh, I've been to the Bronx Zoo many times. Central Park Zoo, not so good. San Diego Zoo, overhyped, I think. They are, yeah, the animals are very far away. But the Houston Zoo is really good. And so one of the first things that happened to me is when I got here, at, at, arrived in Houston, is I went out uh, to the Houston Zoo because we have this relationship. And it all started in 2008 when uh, Dr. Alan Heron of, of Baylor, who's a professor of pathology, called a colleague at the zoo to express deep condolences because Mac, a two-year-old elephant, had died from a very common disease in uh, captive elephants, endotheliotropic herpes virus, or EEHV. It's a herpes virus just like you get it in your mouth, but it's elephants, and because they have a long trunk, uh, it's, they have a lot of surface area, and what they die from or get infected with, they get an encephalitis, so sort of brain infection. So, the, so uh, Dr. Heron and uh, Dr. Flanagan, the veterinarian at the zoo, discussed maybe we could combine our expertise and figure out a way to help not only these domestic elephants, but uh, elephants in the wild, which led to a long-term collaboration uh, with Dr. Paul Ling, a professor of molecular virology and microbiology, who leads the team for Baylor in trying to understand this disease. And so what, what we've done is, uh, we've developed a PCR test that can detect, the, can detect the virus very quickly, as well as a treatment plan to intervene when the virus is found. And so what happens is, uh, if they find it, they, go, they treat it, and they treat it with the same drug that you would do if you get a cold sore, herp, uh, acyclovir. The dose is 45 uh, milligrams per kilogram, three times a day for 28 days, which in a 113 kilogram calf is about five grams. <laughs> it's, if you look at your pill size, That'd be, a, that'd be a pill that big. So, you know, if it's an elephant, you got to have a big pill. Uh, so in, in, it, it worked very well, and it's, it was actually very effective. And it's important because both in African and Asian elephants, uh, this particular uh, disease is really bad, uh, often causes death in, in the young calves. Uh, in 2013, a complete geno genome of uh, the elephant herpes virus was sequenced by Baylor and Hopkins. And so we've been leading the way on understanding this particular disease of elephants. So let's go talk about Baby Baylor. You must have been a beautiful baby. You must have been a wonderful child. So Baby Baylor was the first calf born that was, uh, that was treated twice. He, had, uh, he was detected twice to have uh, a herpes virus. He was treated, and both times he recovered, and uh, the, because of that, they wanted me to meet him. So my very first trip over to the zoo was a picture with me and baby Baylor here trying to pick my pocket. I couldn't believe it. I'm thinking, what a nice elephant. I'd like smile, and he's got his trunk in my pocket. He actually took my wallet. <laughs> He's a wonderful, I can't, I was hoping he'd be gone, but no, anyway, he, he's, he's, he's a really wonderful uh, little baby. So he, he, t he did very well, and he was treated and successfully, and age, at, at the age of 14, he's made a new transition. He's recently been moved to Denver Zoo because, you know, if you steal my wallet, you're on my list, we're getting rid of you. So we traded him, and we, we sent, uh, he's being reunited, reunited with his brother Duncan. We are receiving in exchange uh, Chuck, a 15-year-old elephant from the Denver Zoo. So we're going to really excited because we're going to hear from Dr. Lin all about Ling about all this. So uh, I think you'll you'll really enjoy meeting Dr. Ling. So Dr. Ling, let's go to you. Around about 2008, 2009, there was a death of a young elephant named Mac at the Houston Zoo. 
And this is a six elephant that had died from a lethal hemorrhagic disease uh, caused by a virus called elephant endotheliotropic herpes virus, or EEHV. And this is six elephant at the Houston Zoo that had died from this disease. And the, the zoo was at a crossroads. They really were looking to be more proactive about doing something about this disease. And me, I happen to be one of the local herpes virus experts in the Texas Medical Center. They approached me to see whether I could do something to help them. And uh, I thought about it for a couple of days, and it really came down to who would want to help save baby elephants. And so I decided I'd try to find a way to make it work. Um, I designed or thought or envisioned a uh, research program. I call it Bench to Barn, and it had three phases. Uh, diagnostics, evaluation of treatments, and this was to generate tools and knowledge to help veterinarians and zookeepers detect and manage this disease better than it was currently being done. And then long term, we had a longer term strategy of thinking about generating a, a vaccine against this virus. I mean, obviously it was uh, emotional. I, I didn't really think about it until I knew that Baylor was going to be transferred up to Denver. But Baylor really does signify uh, all the accomplishments that we've had along the way. Baylor has, has experienced a mild illness from these EHVs. So, you know, the diagnostic tools that we develop, the protocols that we develop for treating this disease alongside with the Houston Zoo were important for helping to treat Baylor. In fact, there's been six cases, I think, total of clinical disease from EHV at the zoo. Baylor was part of two of those. So uh, we learned a lot by just treating Baylor in those cases and he survived and it's been, I mean, really fulfilling that we had a part directly in helping all these cases, including Baylor's, survive uh, these EHV associated events and now see that he's going to be immune now to these for the rest of his life. And so I really think he's a, he's a great ambassador for the success of our, our program. I'm sad to see him go. Um, Baylor is, I would consider him one of the more, call him a gentle giant. He's really one of the more beloved elephants at the zoo. And I, I think I'm not the only one. I think everyone's kind of really sad to see him go, but also happy to that, uh, see him contribute to, to what we know about EHV overall. So wasn't it great getting to hear uh, Dr. Ling and all the cool stuff we're doing with uh, with uh, herpes virus and elephants? But you know, we do way more than that. Through the years, uh, we have collaborated with the zoo on a lot of issues. Uh, we took care of a Komodo dragon who dislocated his shoulder and had to get a shoulder brace. Uh, we had a, uh, a, a pink flamingo that had a knee problem. We had a knee brace for the pink flamingo. We've treated orangutans, tigers, and others. And uh, it's a really great partnership because we do have all kinds of sus subspecialty medicine that helps them. But they, they have a large group of veterinarians and they're outstanding. I mean, their hospital facilities there are, are fantastic. Anyway, wonderful to work with the zoo. So I want to end today with a bunch of shout outs. First of all, congratulations to all the members of our faculty who won awards. They, these awards are presented in the Cullen Auditorium each year and they include Barbara and Corby J. Robertson, Presidential Award for Excellence in Education. Uh, the Ben and Margaret Love Foundation, Bobby Alfred Award for Academic Clinical Professionalism, the Norton Rose Fulbright Faculty Excellence Awards, uh, the Faculty Awards for Excellence in Patient Care, the Clark Faculty Service Award, and the John P. McGovern Outstanding Teacher Award. And uh, you'll get uh, congratulations to all of you. We really need you to be the great teachers that you are, and it's, been, it's a wonderful honor to be able to uh, think about you during that day. So congratulations to all of the award winners, and have a wonderful weekend, and I can't wait to see you next week.